Sorry? Okay, yeah. Oh, I haven't got that. All right, let's get started, folks. So, let's get started, folks. All right. Now, um, we're almost there. So, 5.3, all right, we're up to in the textbook, which is under the heading of cleaning agents. Now, being an all boys school, I would assume that you probably don't know anything about cleaning. Does anybody do cleaning at home? What is cleaning? That's the question I thought you would have. Okay. Now, um, I, I clean at my house. Okay, I actually clean floors and I clean toilets even and showers and things like that. And I also clean driveways and I get rid of oil off all sorts of stuff like on the driveway and the car. Um, and we need to have some idea um, about what we are trying um, to get rid of when we are actually cleaning. And people write books on this stuff, okay? Um, in terms of how to get rid of certain stains. And it all depends on what we've talked about already in class. So there are a couple of different types of reactions that we've talked about. And we already understand what a polar molecule looks like. We can identify polar molecules. We know what a non-polar molecule looks like. We can identify non-polar structures. We know what an acid looks like and we know <coughs> formulas for bases. We know all those things. Okay. We probably know a whole series of oxides as well. And we also introduced Early on, if you recall, when we're talking about surfactant chemistry, we spoke about, when we used the word surfactant, and I might not have used it at that particular point, it was chemistry that occurred obviously at the surface between two different types of molecules. And we used the idea of secondary bonding to work out what happened in these, okay, to here in the context of those and we applied a little acronym or a little rule if you like like dissolves like so this comes back again it's not an answer remember some of you give me that answer in the past so you can't say you know water dissolves um, polar compounds because of like dissolves like all right like dissolves like helps us to remember that polar compounds form secondary bonds with other polar compounds. If the polar compound's got an OH, what sort of secondary bonds is going to form if H bonding? So we know about H bonding, we know about dipole bonding, we know about dispersion. So if it's a non-polar scenario, non-polar, non-polar, di sorry, dispersion forces will dissolve other dispersion or non-polar compounds because of the dispersion forces between the molecules. Now, Let's see if we can apply that. Because that's the assumed knowledge sitting behind how you get rid of stains, okay? How you dissolve stuff, in other words. Oil, so what we need to work out first is what sort of a compound is oil? And what is it? We know that it's non-polar, okay? So oil is a non-polar compound. Um, and when I put up here the chemical makeup, Okay, perhaps I should have put down over here. That's where I should have written on polar there. Okay, so it's a non-polar molecule. We know that because we talked about it before. It's a very long carbon chain. Okay, greater than 10 in the chain length for a, an oil structure. How do we get rid of it? Well, we need to have some sort of a non-polar solvent. Non-polar is what we're after. Okay, what sort of non-polar solvent could I use to dissolve oil? We've sort of talked about this before, but ethanol is not going to work very well. A big alcohol, probably not, you're not going to have access to a big long chain alcohol. If you went to your shed at home, uh, your parent shed, uh, what would you find that would be non-polar that would dissolve, dissolve an oil stain? Petrol, okay. So these sorts of things here, the non-polar stuff that you could use, you could actually use just petrol because no petrol is hexane predominantly. Listen up. So petrol is hexane. 
Um, and that's non-polar, so it's going to obviously dissolve the oil, okay, fairly rapidly. You could use other things. What other things do you think you could use? Lemon juice. Lemon juice, no, that's not going to work very well. Okay. A uh, bit more information, Jack. Detergent. Detergents, okay. You could use a detergent, not any detergent, okay, but it would need to be a fairly strong detergent to actually get rid of an oil spill, okay, or you know, a big stain in the driveway when you're attempting to change the oil. You could use things like kerosene um, as well. That's a very good uh, non polar solvent. But by far the best out of all these probably is what Jack said was the detergent. Because the detergent means that we can have long carbon chain, all right, and on the end of a, a detergent molecule, what we find are sulfonate groups, and the sulfonate groups are very polar. Now we haven't done so to detergent yet, but we'll do that in the next video. So a detergent has the ability, so it will actually dissolve the non-polar compound, but then I can actually get water into it, and I can actually hose it off, or I can dissolve it. These compounds, petrol and kerosene, they'll certainly dissolve the oil. Problem is, I can't get rid of the petrol and kerosene then either. All right? It'll dissolve it, it'll get it off something, but unless I can get rid of the oil, okay, that is the petrol or the kerosene, it's going to still be there. It will simply help disperse the oil stain. That's all it's going to do. All right? Now, so detergent would be far better to do that. The context of our, um, of our unit here, we would simply, you would simply say either petrol or kerosene at this point because we're after a non-polar solvent to dissolve a non-polar solvent what sort of forces are going to happen there? Dispersion. Dispersion is what we're after okay so we've got the idea that like dissolves like application all right, of surfactant chemistry next one acid or a base so if I've got an acid stain base. you'd use a base okay if I had a base stain I'd use an acid, okay? So the chemical makeup of these, obviously, they're either acid or a base, that's what we're referring to. How would we get rid of it? Well, if we had a base, we'd need to have an acid, okay? If we had an acid, we would need to react it with a base. Can you give me some examples of acids that you might have as well at home? Um, you could go to the shed and you might be able to get some spirits of salts, which is hydrochloric acid, maybe. But it's probably something that you wouldn't want to be working with. Citric acid. Citric, okay. So you can actually, there is actually like, you can buy packets of it, citric acid, and I use it to clean my um, coffee machine. Citric acid. Alright, citric acid is the easiest one, vinegar would be the easiest. So most people have got vinegar, okay, at home. Oops, vinegar, B I N. Vinegar. You can actually get citric acid, okay, from the supermarket. Okay, it's a white powder. Yeah. Uh, you can go and get citric acid because it's used in cooking as well, uh, for pickling foods, uh, for long-term preservation, okay, or preserving. I think that's probably the better word. Vinegar, citric acid, they're really available, okay. It doesn't matter whether it's white vinegar or red vinegar, okay. They're still going to have the acid in them. Um, and the hydrochloric acid, as Tamati said, if you have got some, um, what did I say it was before? Um, Spirits of salts, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. So you can use that as well for an acid. So they're pretty readily available, okay. Some of them are going to be in the kitchen, uh, some of them might be in the shed at home. What about bases? What bases do we have at home? Bleach is not a base. Sodium bicarb, yep. So you, again, you use that. For bread making and or for cooking makes the yeast rise okay or the bread rise or the cake so the bicarbonate produces carbon dioxide so you can actually go and get some sodium bicarbonate that's pretty commonly available that's a very common base anything else that you'd see that would be of a base at home depends on No, that wouldn't be basic, Jack. No. Oven no. Oven no. Oven no, not soap. Oven cleaner. Yeah. 
probably a little bit violent, okay? I don't think I'm, probably going, I'm not gonna go and get oven cleaner to necessarily clean something on a carpet or on lino floor because oven cleaner is about 30% sodium hydroxide. Is that right? Talcum powder, no. All right, talcum powder is not going to do anything. It's a silicate. It's neutral. It might help soak up something, but it certainly isn't going to dissolve it. Jack, yeah. But good thinking. All right, talcum powder. Sorry, what did I say? What did we say? Oh, oven cleaner. Sorry, oven cleaner. Uh, sodium hydroxide, but caution with that. It's probably going to be a little bit too strong in the caustic area. Or who's got a dishwasher at home? Okay. So dishwasher, what you use in dishwasher typically is dishwashing powder, and that's the same thing. So this is the dishwasher powder, if you look on the packet, okay, as well. Um, and that doesn't just dissolve acids and bases, it dissolves just about anything, all right? It's a very caustic compound. So my son uses that, as I do. Um, if we've got bottles, for example, before we make um, beer, not immediately prior, but um, a few days beforehand, we soak the bottles in sodium hydroxide, concentrated solution, and it gets rid of the labels, dissolves the labels, dissolves the, the glue off the outside of the bottle. Any bacteria, it kills. They're very highly alkaline, okay? So that sodium hydroxide idea, you've got to be pretty careful with that because it's fairly, fairly dangerous. Uh, things like drain cleaner, okay, as well. Drano, if you look at the packet, it's actually sodium hydroxide. So, really available um, in any households. Colour stain. So if I had my beautiful pen, okay, and if I had a big blue or black ink mark, okay, on my shirt, okay, uh, obviously I'd have to get rid of the stain, but what would I probably use to get rid of the stain? But I need to be pretty careful how I did it. Pens, all right. Soap probably wouldn't be strong enough. No. Nope. Detergent wouldn't do anything. Bleach. Bleach. Got to be careful with bleach. Okay. <laughs> so the stain, typically a stain, normally is due to some sort of a dye. Okay. Normally some sort of a dye, and you would have to ask, is the dye polar or non-polar? You need to ask that first, okay? That'll tell you about its solubility. So if it's a dye, and if it is a permanent type arrangement, then yes, I could use a, a bleach because a bleach neutralizes the color. This is a redox reaction, okay? And that's how it works. So it actually is a redox reaction in that instance. Now, if order, in order to do that, I need to be pretty careful because bleach will take away all the colour. So if I was going to do it on this shirt, for example, which has got a, I don't know where the colour is, blue, I'd end up with a white spot here, okay? Because it would take everything off. The whole colour would be removed, all right? So, what I would probably use, all right, is a couple of things, but something that other house or most households have is eucalyptus oil. And eucalyptus oil, you get it in little containers, okay, little bottles, and that is very handy for getting off any stain that is of a non polar origin, okay. So if you've got, say, um, labels off, um, say, bottles or Anything you purchase, if you use eucalyptus oil, it'll quickly dissolve, okay, all of that sticky gum that's left on the labels, you know, after you try and peel it off. And it also is a very strong smell of eucalyptus. It's toxic, by the way, okay, if you drink it. Yeah, yeah. So, you've got to be careful. Eucalyptus oil for only small, small non-polar stains. Um, bleach, yes. I've got to be a little bit careful about how you use it, okay? Food stains, so if you're a messy eater, not too bad today, all right? But if you're a messy eater, no, no. The chemicals typically in here, okay, are proteins. 
So most food is based on proteins of one form or another, unless it's fat. If it was a fat stain, I would use soap or detergent. Okay? Or I could use kidney soil, which is non-polar, or I could use petrol or kerosene to get rid of it, but my clothes are probably going to smell a bit funny after that. All right? So if it's a protein, it's a food stain, typically what we use is an enzyme, which normally is added to um, washing. If you look at the content of uh, washing detergent, it has got, funny enough, it's got a small amount of detergent in there. It's got chemicals called fillers that don't do anything, just make up the volume of the detergent, okay? And it's also got enzymes, all right? You can read it off the label. And the enzymes operate within a certain temperature range. Some of the enzymes are sensitive to high temperature. So if you're using something like, say, cold power, not that you would know, unless you've washed before. Anybody do their own washing? Nobody does their own washing. Good, Jack. Excellent. Okay. Should we do it? All my boys have done their own washing since this high. Okay. Um, so, washing. Um, so if you look at the actual label, it's got a whole series of chemicals in there, all right? Other things that also keep the, um, the wash alkaline. And we'll talk more about why it's preferred to have an alkaline and not acidic as well. Um, so the detergent has got added to it enzymes, and the enzymes are designed to break down any food, all right, that might be you know, caught in amongst the clothes if we're talking about a washing scenario. Ink, water soluble. Obviously this is gonna be some sort of a polar compound, okay? And as um, we all said before, okay, the sort of stuff, all right, that you can use to get rid of a polar compound, funny enough, is water, okay? So water being universal solvent for polar compounds works pretty well. You could use things like metho as well. So most houses have methylated spirits, all right? Somewhere in the laundry, I would assume. Metho is a mixture of methanol and, and ethanol, both polar compounds, but of course they put an additive into it so people don't drink it um, because it is not for human consumption. The last thing I've got there is rust, iron oxide. Okay, what would you use to get rid of rust? It's just an oxide, so polar, it's just an oxide. Okay, we would get rid of the oxide, we can actually use an acid to get rid of that. Okay, it'll dissolve the oxide and stuff like um, oops, CLR. And if you look at the contents of that, in CLR, it's got phosphoric acid. Okay, so basically, the Depending on what you're trying to dissolve, that's what this first section's on about. Um, if you know what you are trying to dissolve, then you should be able to come up with a solution, okay? As in, what chemical do I need to grab in order to get rid of that? For example, 5.18, the question, um, it says, the stain is ballpoint ink, the recommended solvent they put down as being methylated spirits. So what's the polarity of the solvent? Yep, it's polar solvent, we just went through that. That means the ballpoint ink in this instance must be a water soluble version of the ink. Because if it's not, and you use metho, all it's gonna do is to spread the stain further and make a big mess, okay? Then we've got lipstick and dry cleaning fluid. Now, let's ask lipstick, dry cleaning fluid. What is dry cleaning fluid in terms of the chemical names? Anybody know? We don't use a lot these days. I wouldn't want to be using a lot anyway, okay? So dry cleaning fluid is carbon tetrachloride. Although I question that, I'm not sure what they use now, I'm pretty sure it's not carbon tetrachloride um, because it's fairly uh, carcinogenic. So that they'll be using a special compound, but it would be similar to that. What sort of polarity does that have? Carbon tetrachloride. Non-polar. If we draw the structure, yeah, so here it is. So carbon tetrachloride, a very non-polar compound, okay, and we use that to get rid of lipstick stains, which is based on oil, okay, 
and oil products. So if you have problems with lipstick on your clothes, boys, okay, um, then that's how you get rid of it before you go home. All right, nail polish says ethyl ethanoate. We just made an ester, okay, last week. What sort of a compound is ethyl ethanoate? Say that again. It's a non-polar compound because we separated it from a mixture of polar compounds. So that's non-polar. That means it's assuming that nail polish is going to be non-polar. Like dissolves like, dispersion forces must happen. Soft drink, water. Soft drink must be therefore soluble, polar, okay, in order for it to be dissolved in water. All right, that's the sort of stuff that we're after for that first section on stains. So any questions? Everybody cool with that? Jack, are you right with that? Can I sign off now? Alright, signing off.